the large majority of people in the United States will at some point in their life have some type of spinal disorder, back pain, or neck pain. And it's important to remember that the large majority of those people will never need spinal surgery and that they will, they will recover completely with non-surgical treatments. So uh, whenever a problem is encountered in the spine, uh, the first thing that has to be done after appropriate diagnosis is to treat it in an appropriate and conservative fashion. And in many cases, that will involve physical therapy, some type of pain management, occasionally uh, injections or shots, acupuncture, and other similar treatments. And the time to consider surgery is after those treatments have been performed in the majority of cases and if those treatments have not been successful in alleviating the patient's symptoms. Uh, and at that point, surgery should still be carefully considered because not every patient is going to benefit from surgery or should have surgery. So surgery should really be considered after appropriate conservative treatment and after a careful diagnostic evaluation and that will often include, often include MRIs, x-rays, and other tests. But the problems that can be treated with uh, minimally invasive surgery include lumbar disc herniations, which are generally considered pinched nerves in the low back, uh, spinal stenosis, which is arthritis, which can affect the neck or low back and can uh, pinch nerves and cause nerve pain, uh, fractures, which can be treated uh, with uh, the kyphoplasty procedure, which is a way to stabilize fractures through a very small incision, uh, and instability where the bones move abnormally or in a way which causes back pain. Uh, there are many spinal procedures that can be done using uh, minimally invasive approaches and technology. Uh, briefly, the spine is made of bones, uh, nerves, cartilage, and ligaments, and the associated soft tissue around it, such as musculature. And uh, often spinal disorders involve a nerve being pinched by disc material, cartilage, bone material, arthritis, or in some cases by fractures. And uh, spinal surgery often uh, has as a goal to try to free the nerves and relieve pain by removing pressure from the nerve. Well, there's several different types of minimally invasive spinal surgery, and uh, depending on the problem, the treatment is, of course, tailored to that specific uh, individual's needs. Um, the common and uh, most straightforward minimally invasive approach that we use is uh, that where we use a uh, microscopic approach through a small tube to access the spine and uh, decompress the nerves without disrupting the surrounding tissue or, or minimizing the disruption of the surrounding tissue. For example, if you have a pinched nerve in your low back and the nerve is being squeezed inside the spinal canal by a piece of disc material, uh, I'll put a tube down to the spine and then work through that tube with a microscope and various specialized instruments to free the nerves and uh, relieve pain. And uh, typically that would involve uh, a small half inch or so skin incision, uh, which is followed by passing uh, dilators to split the muscle so that we can then put a tube down and work through the tube. And that allows us to bring in a microscope and work through a very small portal. And uh, the result of that is there's less tissue disruption than there would be with a traditional open procedure. And uh, we can achieve the same surgical objectives. The objectives of minimally invasive spinal surgery are the same as open spinal surgery. Uh, we're treating the same problems and the goal is the same, which is to relieve pain, restore function, and return the patient to a normal happy state of activity. Um, not, every, not every spinal disorder can be treated minimally invasively and some are just not appropriate for, for it. Um, but the goal is the same, it's a different technique. Well, the benefits uh, of minimally invasive spine surgery are several. Uh, the incisions are smaller and res as a result the scars that are left behind are smaller. Uh, the significant advantage that I believe is there's much less disruption of the normal tissue around the spine. Uh, when you do an open procedure, a lot of time there is significant tissue disruption that's just involved with getting to where you need to be to do the surgery to treat the problem. And the minimally invasive approach allows you to spare a lot of that tissue and leave a lot of the normal body structure. So you're as normal as we can leave you when we're done. Um, the
uh, other benefits are there's less bleeding generally, uh, there's a quicker healing of uh, the incisions, there's a quicker return to recovery, and there's typically less pain postoperatively.